Hello everybody and welcome to today's Chrissy B Show. Now here on this program we always talk about how important it is to look after your physical health as it can influence also your mental well-being. And in most of our shows we try to feature nutritional and fitness advice for you at home. Now there's loads of research to suggest the positive link of looking after your body in order to have a fitter mind. So on tonight's show we'll show you how to motivate yourself to look after your fitness and health and why it's so imperative for young and old people alike. But before we move on, let's read some of your tweets regarding this subject. Here's some motivation tweets from The Secret Fitty. <laughs> Getting enough sleep every night is very important to help reach your fitness goals. And someone else says, motivation is what gets you started, habit is what keeps you going. And someone else says, good things come to those who wait, greater things come to those who are willing to work for it. Love that one. And Karen says, cook your meals in advance. It makes it easier to stick to your diet plan when you only have to reheat and eat. And Adnes says, take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live. I love that as well. And one last one, once you see results, it becomes an addiction. Now, if you at home like to take care of your health and fitness and have some tips of your own, tell us about it by tweeting us at Chrissy B Show or leave the message on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. So we do have lots in store for you on today's show as we've brought in our experts when it comes to looking after your body and your mind, actually. So we have fitness expert Ben Cooper, who you've seen on some of our videos, who'll be giving us some demonstrations in our studio of different exercises you can do from the comfort of your own home. But it's not only what we do, but also what we eat that we need to keep an eye on. So for that, we have with us resident nutritionist Hannah Richards to tell us more about what foods are good for the body and mind. We also have GP Dr. Rob Hicks, who'll be speaking to us about the types of conditions and illnesses to watch out for this time of year. Plus, I'll be sharing how I keep myself fit and healthy and showing you how to make my breakfast smoothie that I have pretty much every morning. But now, let's welcome our resident GP, Dr. Rob Hicks. Hello, Rob. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm doing my best to keep well. I'm trying to stay away from all the colds that are coming our way at this time of the year. So, but so yes. far, so far, so good. Healthy living seems to be doing the doing good. the job. All right. So yeah. we are talking about health and fitness today, um, and would like to talk a bit more about how fitness and looking after yourself actually helps your mental state. Can you give us a bit of advice? Yeah, I mean, healthy living, fantastic for keeping our spirits up and, and keeping mm. us out of the the, you know, the doldrums, because by eating a healthy diet, keeping you know regular exercise and, and keeping stress under control, mm -hmm. not only do we avoid a lot of minor ailments like coughs and colds because we boost our immune system, yeah. but also we are less likely to suffer with anxiety and depression. Exercise, as you know, releases the feel-good hormones, the, the endorphins that make us feel so much better. Mm -hmm. um, and a, a healthy lifestyle also, if we need to lose weight and we lose that weight, it contributes to building our self-esteem and our self-confidence um, and we do pat ourselves on the back for living a healthy lifestyle mm -hmm. I certainly do when I reach for an apple or a banana rather than a donut I say well done Rob yeah and, it's I, true. and I feel should, better yeah. for doing it you should <laughs> <laughs> so tell us some of the that maybe the common things that are coming up obviously there's flus and colds and stuff what about other, some other things how can we prepare for yeah, I mean, one of the things I'm expecting to see is with people's skin, actually. I'm, I'm expecting mm. people, with the, as the cold weather comes in, the skin to be drier, and dry skin yeah. sometimes get itchy. So for people who've got eczema, for example, um, then it, they're likely to suffer flare-ups in the, in the cold weather. Okay. So they should be preparing by making sure they're moisturising their skin a couple more of times than, during the day, usual. probably more, th more than usual. Mm -hmm. um, with regards to avoiding coughs and colds, as you mentioned, again, it's the healthy lifestyle, but also making sure you wash your hands yeah. regularly through mm -hmm. the, the day so that you're not going to take that virus onto your fingers and introduce it to you through your eyes, your mouth or your nose into mm -hmm. the body. Flu jowls, you know, important for people to have. Yeah. Um, seasonal affective disorder is, is already in, in progress for many, many people. Um, and if you want to avoid that, or indeed just you know, the, the, the winter blues, get outside in the daylight as much yeah. as you can. And again, mm -hmm. a little bit of activity. It doesn't need to be in lycra down, you know, running around the, <laughs> the, the park. You can just go for a brisk walk or, or jump on your bike yeah. or in your lunch break, just w walk around the block, for example. Yeah, all, all helpful, isn't it? It all works. Now, Rob, tell us about this, this leaf 
hugely because I think it's quite a good thing, quite a good initiative by yeah, the NHS. Yeah, this is this is going to come winging its way through your letterbox, mm -hmm. and this is the NHS's annual Stay Well This Winter campaign, and essentially it's it's got lots of information inside on the things that we can all do to stay mm -hmm. well. So you'll see there the things about keeping warm, yeah. for example, um, how to prepare for for winter, how to make sure that you. For example, you make a hot drink, put it in a thermos flask, so it's there ready for when you need I'm just, it. So I just, something just caught my attention there. Keep your bedroom window closed on winter nights because breathing cold air can be bad for your health as it increases the risk of chest infections. Oops, yes. I like having my window. Yes, no, <laughs> no, in fact, really it's not, uh, that, that, that's one to, that's, that's not strictly always true. Yeah, okay. So I think um, it's, it's something, but the bottom, the bottom line is that um, we, we don't want to get cold yeah. because being too cold might leave us susceptible to illness. Mm -hmm. um, but what's really very important is that you prepare. Yeah. So you pop along and see your pharmacist and mm -hmm. make sure you've got the medicines in your cabinet that you, you might need. And not wait till there's something wrong before you don't so wait. prep before. Be prepared. Really and yeah. the other thing it says at the, at the end, which I think is, should be right at the beginning, is look out for other people. Yeah. Pop in on a neighbour. Make sure that they're Get, they've got food in, that they've got, they've got access for hot drinks mm -hmm. and make sure that they're able to turn the heating on. There are lots of benefits available for people to make sure that they can stay warm over mm -hmm. winter. And, you know, so many people say, well, I can't really afford to, you know, to turn the heating on. Th for, for people who are struggling, there are benefits available. So, yeah, you know, ask sure your doctor, yeah. ask your social services um, yeah. and basically stay well this winter. Brilliant. Rob, thank you so, so much and we'll see you again very soon. My pleasure. Thank you. Now, after the break, our resident nutritionist, Hannah Richards, will be joining us to tell us more about what foods are good for the body. And actually, we have a whole playlist dedicated to healthy recipes done by Hannah Richards and also by Ben Cooper. And, you know, some lots of lovely recipes from like main meals, drinks even, and also some yummy desserts that are really good for you. So do check it out and the information is on the bottom of your screen right now. But let's take a look at one of the videos. Hello and welcome to the MTS Kitchen. My name's Hannah and this is Ben, and today we're going to show you how to make a chicken and vegetable seasonal soup. We're going to start with um, our, veg our vegetable prep, and I've already just cut down some carrots, white potatoes and sweet potatoes. This is 500 grams of chicken breast, and I'm just slicing it up so that it cooks quicker. So let's just put that, I'm gonna take that garlic, that pan's hot. So this is just sort of our base. You could use a red onion, you could add some chili in here. So with the chicken, just make sure that it's all nice and browned. You're sort of searing the chicken and keep it moving around the pan so that all that beautiful pink breast turns to white. Once, we, once the chicken breast is all white, then we can start to add the mushrooms to it. Let's get those veg bubbling up. OK, Ben, ready for those mushrooms? Right in. Yeah. And I'm just going to turn the heat down now on those because the, the chicken's done. A bit of sea salt. Don't be scared of salt, remember, as long as it's not kitchen salt, so the, um, table salt. And some black peppercorns, white peppercorns or red peppercorns. And you can always test. You can always have a little test to see whether that chicken's done or not. Just take a piece out and give it a cut in the middle. And there we go, done, that's perfect. So we're gonna leave that to the side and have a little look at our veg. Okay, so now the, veg the vegetables are done. Um, so I'm gonna turn them down. And the chicken's done too. So all we need to do now is, is put it all in the um, in the Maggi mix. So this was 500 grams of chicken, 
chicken breast. You can use the thigh if you're more of a leg person. Um, and we added garlic, some shallots, and some mushrooms. This juice is where the flavor comes from. We're gonna add our carrots, sweet potatoes, and white potatoes. Now the water, um, the water from the vegetables is now full of all your good nutrients and vitamins, so we don't want to throw away that water. You might find that sometimes when you're, you know, when you're doing a, uh, a roast dinner, you use the water from the vegetables to make the gravy. The gravy yeah. So we're just gonna put all that in there. Um, depending on how chunky you want it, depends on how long you put, keep your finger on the, on the button. Um, okay, so then all we're going to do, actually what I thought I'd just do is throw a bit of uh, spinach in for some green on the top. Because spinach just takes, you know, no time to cook, you can wilt it down. Just the heat of the food will, will wilt the spinach in here. With nice chunky soup. And then to top it off with some garnish, I'm going to just put a few bits of chive on top. Some red, yellow and black peppercorns. A touch of our favourite sea salt. Two spoons. And we're ready for lunch. Perfect. Seasonal chicken and vegetable soup. Mmm. Mm. Beautiful. So we'll be speaking to Hannah after the break. Plus, at the end of the show, I'll be sharing you how I keep myself fit and healthy and also tell you more about my own personal fitness journey. So don't go away. Hi, I'm Chrissy B and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10pm on my channel Sky203. Visit chrissybshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page The Chrissy B Show. Welcome back everybody and if you've just joined us, today is all about having good fitness and how that links to having a healthier mind. Now just before the break we had our resident GP Dr Rob Hicks to discuss the types of conditions and illnesses to watch out for this time of year. Now if you've missed this segment you can head over to our YouTube channel Chrissy B Show, subscribe to it and watch this show very soon and also all of our previous shows already up there in your own time. And now we have with us our resident nutritionist, Hannah Richards, to tell us more about what foods are good for the body and for the mind. Hello, Hannah. Hi, Chrissy. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you. So obviously we do see Hannah uh, regularly because there's, al there's al almost every show we have one of your yeah, recipes. Yeah, recipe, absolutely. Yeah, which is great. Really, really healthy stuff. And it shows that you can actually eat healthily and have fun. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, nice, quick, easy recipes that yeah. everyone can make. You, like I always say, you don't need to be a cool and blue chef to, yeah. to be able to cook in the kitchen. So. Definitely. Now, I do have some questions here, and I, I'm actually going to stick to the questions that are on here because <laughs> I find them very interesting, and I, I'd like to know, obviously, some of the answers to these as well. Okay. So, obviously, the, the obvious question is what foods, what top foods are good for, for the body? Um, well, I guess... Sort of a general statement would be that all food is good for the body that has um, life force to it. So food that's been grown, mm -hmm. it's almost like food that rots. If your yeah. food rots, then it's kind of good for you. If it can stay on a shelf for weeks on end, then it's got lots of preservatives to keep it there and mm. your body can't break that down and so it's not as good for you. Is that, does that include tinned stuff like tinned beans and things like that? It does, but if mm. they're in, you, there's, then there's different degrees of that. So you can mm. have bit, like tuna, for example, is in water. Um, yeah. Tinned pears might have different types of sugar on them, preservatives. So the more ingredients something in a tin has, right. the worse it is for, you, for the body. Okay then. And we have another one here, like, are there specific foods that are very good for, for the mind? 
Yep, all your foods that have what we call omega-3s in them, and omega-3s yeah. are anti-inflammatory, and you'll, you probably know that all our fish have a high dose of omega-3s in them. So yeah. as long as you get a good uh, source of fish in your diet, um, mm -hmm. good fats, um, they're all really good brain food. So keep you healthy, keep your brain working, um, yeah. and keep all the aches and pains in your joints down as well. I, I eat a lot of flaxseed. Is yeah, that, is that that's the same? A good, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm kidding. Alrighty, and any foods that we should avoid at all costs? Well, I always say that you should avoid things that have been, to a degree, heated, treated, coloured, injected, um, bleached, and then mm. flown thousands of miles around the world to get to being on your plate. So when you look at your plate, if you can figure out how it got there, um, <laughs> then it's going to be good for you. Yeah. But if you can't, then it's probably been through lots of those different processes, injected, coloured, treated. Mm -hmm. And again, it's just too many processes for your little old body to break down and, yeah. and just, just more hard work. And so Is that why people get very tired sometimes as well? Because their body's having trouble with what... Absolutely, yeah. You know, we just... We're, we're an organic being and we can only do what we have available. So we don't, our, all our enzymes break all our foods down for us. But if mm. something alien goes into the body that our body doesn't recognize, like something maybe that's come out of the microwave or something that's been so processed our body doesn't recognize it, mm -hmm. then it doesn't have those enzymes to break it down and, and so it doesn't. And then it causes toxicity in the body, and that's when we get aches and pains and right. digestive problems and, and tiredness as well. Okay. Now, so, now, I know a lot of people say that they can't afford to eat healthily, that, you know, for example, yeah. organic foods are more expensive yeah. and things like that. So what, what would you say are maybe the, the cheap the cheaper alternatives to something really healthy, the top well, three maybe? Well, the great thing is, is that eating healthy is really cheap. Um, mm. I mean, I know sometimes it can seem that, seem that it's not, but... Eggs are really cheap and they're one of the most uh, all-rounded foods that you can get. Mm -hmm. Protein source, good fat source, you, they're so versatile. If you look at some of the recipes on the playlist, we can turn bre uh, breakfast can be eggs, lunch could be eggs, yeah. dinner could be eggs. Um, then all your vegetables, which are really cheap as well. And you, mm -hmm. can, you can have some beautiful vegetarian dishes, stir fries. Um, and then one, the other thing would be going to your butcher's and looking at all the cheap cuts of meat. So mm. you've got your really expensive cuts like the fillet steak and the yeah. ribeyes and, and because they're sort of, uh, they're <laughs> expensive, we don't eat so much of them, but you've got um, things like, I mean, we're probably not going to eat them, but trotters, pig's trotters <laughs> and ears. It's a blast and from the past. Exactly, <laughs> very Victorian. So yeah. the way the Victorians ate is um, very cheap as well, but mm. a good one would be oxtail, oxtail soup, Cheap, yeah. very nutritious. What's the nutritional content of that? One? It's what, all protein, good collagen, oh, okay. good fat. So it's um, you get. I didn't think that was healthy. That's really surprising. Yeah, because yeah. it's because it's all natural as well. Mm -hmm. So your body your body craves it, and your body want, uses it for every cell in the body as well. Yeah. Um, so you can turn it into soup, um, and then also you could ask your butcher for bones, which he'll just give away to you. Mm -hmm. And then from your bones, you can make broths and stocks um, yeah. and they're they're a great source of um, heal, uh, source for healing the body as wow. well great advice there uh, now I've got a question here because somebody wants to know what your your favorite healthy meal is for you and your family oh friend. easy roast chicken okay I do like roast chicken actually it's great isn't yeah. it and it, again it's really cheap and easy and healthy and you just choose loads of different vegetables roast mm -hmm. potatoes sweet potatoes all your greens and the good thing about doing a chicken is that it turns itself into so many other dishes at the same time yeah. so you all feed the family and then you scrape off all the bo all, all the meat off the bones turn it into a stock or a broth mm -hmm. turn it into a soup maybe there's a bit of chicken left over some chicken sandwiches the next day yeah. you know you can be really it's very economical isn't it very, very economical okay yeah. and what about your favorite healthy snack oh well i did actually make this the other day but you get some beautiful dates mm -hmm. And you stuff them with almonds mm. and then you dip them in dark chocolate. Oh, lovely. And they're gorgeous. And it may sound a bit naughty, but it's all about what would be worse than that and what could be better than mm. something that you're not doing. So mm -hmm. it's all natural. You've bought it. You've made it with love. You're probably going to eat less of it um, as opposed to something in a wrapper that's full of, full of um, E numbers yeah, and, and nasties true. that we don't want. Now, you actually recorded that recipe for us recently, yes, didn't you? Yes. Should we take a look, guys? Let's have a look.
Hello and welcome to Hannah's Kitchen. My name's Hannah and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a really quick, simple and nutritious snack for yourself, for your children um, or just for the cupboard so when you need something sweet it's always going to be there. We're going to take uh, some dates, some nice juicy medjool dates which have a, which is a natural sugar. We know we've all gone crazy about sugar recently, um, but we need sugar in our diet. Sugar is in air, all carbohydrates. What we don't want in our diet is the processed sugar. Then take some almonds and just open up the dates and just squeeze them in. So once you've done your dates and almonds, set up a pan uh, with some boiling water and put 200 grams of dark chocolate, break it up into little pieces and just set it on top. So that's going to take a while. Take a wooden spoon and intermittently just give it a little stir. All you need to do is get a cocktail stick or a chopstick as I've got here and just dunk them like that into the chocolate. So once you've dunked your uh, dates stuffed with almonds in the chocolate, just pop them into the fridge for 10 minutes until they set and then they're ready to eat. Hannah, that looked really delicious. I know, I'm hungry I now. Can't, you should have brought some with you. I know, I will next time, I promise. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so now tell us, um, for someone that's kind of wondering, maybe like a healthy meal plan for the day, if they're trying to change their eating habits, what would yeah. you recommend for like breakfast, lunch, dinner, and maybe snacks in between? Oh gosh. Or maybe the snack could be that. We yeah, just I'm definitely, well that would definitely be the snack. <laughs> um, big question, but let's imagine somebody is going from a place where maybe they have a little bit of processed food in their diet mm -hmm. as well maybe they're wanting to lose maybe a little bit of weight and just yeah. generally be healthier and have a healthier mind as well mm -hmm. so um breakfast I would say um, avocado is a great yeah, thing to have for breakfast. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite things is toasting some sourdough bread, mm -hmm. which is yeast free, and then spreading some avocado on, a couple of tomatoes, a drizzle of olive oil, black mm. pepper and salt, and maybe oh, some basil leaves. And the great thing about that breakfast yeah. is, is it's exciting. And yeah. so we get, it, so you, you know, automatically want to um, be creative in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, great things for snacking would be those little yeah. <laughs> almond things um, or nuts and fruits and berries and mm -hmm. um, and then lunchtime I guess at this time of year we always want something a little bit hot don't we mm -hmm. salads have sort of yeah, lost yeah. their lost their appeal at this time of year so a good soup and I'd always recommend to try and get a protein in the soup as well okay. um, so a good chicken and vegetable chicken broth uh, pea and ham, something Ox like that. <laughs> Oxtail, <laughs> oxtail soup. Um, and then dinner. Dinner's dinner's my favourite. So I'd always either go for a piece of fish, mm -hmm. um, some chicken, or some red meat, and then have. If you're trying to lose weight, you probably want to keep the rice and the pasta um, at lunchtime if you're going to have that, and just have yeah. your vegetables in the evening. Yeah, um, and. Tr Pick two or three different vegetables. Sweet mm -hmm. potatoes are great if, you're, if you are craving a carbohydrate in the evening. But always make sure, I always say it, that you've got green stuff on your mm. plate. Because green helps detoxify the body, take all the rubbish out. Um, and the darker the green, the better, because it's full of chlorophyll, which uh, our body craves and gives us a, a happy, happy mind as well at the same time. Now, just, just a question about red meat as well, because mm. I'm actually trying to cut down on, yeah. on the red meat. Is, is that recommended? or Because I've sort of seen these things in the news I lately. And it's like, I, I do love red meat. I think we've just got to be a bit careful when all these sort of claims come out, because mm. there are 101 things that can kill us and 101 <laughs> things that can make us better. And yeah. so it's always a, a bit of a fine line. I think the thing is with meat generally is that it's, it's all about the source of where it's come from. Mm -hmm. So if they've been very happy cows eating really lovely buttercups in a nice green field, then that meat is going to be healthy. If that cow has been in a field with a hundred other cows, has not been able to run around, mm. has been fed really processed food, then that meat is going to be processed and it's not going to give us any nutrition. So right. the, the more organic or, or free range 
um, that the, the, the meat is, the better it is for us. Okay. And the more processed it is, then the harder it is for yeah. us to break down okay. and the more damage it's going to cause us. And just before we go to break, mm -hmm. Hannah, um, how about dessert? Oh, <laughs> dessert. Because well, we always have dinner and dessert, don't we? Like You've got to have dessert, <laughs> exactly. Well, one of my, one of my things is, if, if you're looking for weight loss, dessert, have your dessert. But I always say, if you're going to, um, if you're going to have a treat, you've got to sweat for it. Mm -hmm. okay. So, because then you can, then you can have your dessert guilt free. That's true. Anything with dark chocolate. Um, so a really good one, if, if you're thinking about it, is a bowl full of berries and then drizzle some dark chocolate all over the top. Mm -hmm. um, that would be my favourite. Sounds good to me. All right, China, thank you so, so much. Pleasure. And actually, we're also going to be joined by Ben Cooper after this break. Now, you've seen Ben on some of our videos. He also does some lovely recipes. And today, he's going to be here to talk to us about fitness and think the kind of things that you can do at home and also be demonstrating some exercises for us. So we'll see you right after this break. Hi, I'm Chrissy B and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10pm on my channel Sky203. Visit chrissybshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page The Chrissy B Show. Welcome back everybody to our Fit Body, Fit Mind show today. So we've just spoken to Hannah Richards about nutrition and she's given us some great advice on the types of things we can eat. And now we're going to be talking about the physical fitness with Ben Cooper. Hello, Ben. Hiya, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Thank you for having me, I'm good. <laughs> it's great to have you on. So we've seen you <laughs> yeah. on, our, on your videos and now it's great to have you in the studio for the first time. Um, so I'm just going to read out first of all, Ben, some of the uh, mental health benefits of physical exercise because it is really important for your, yeah, yeah. your mental well-being, isn't it? Massively. Okay. So um, we've got some things. This is from minds.org.uk. And physical activities can reduce anxiety and um, give you happier mood. So when you exercise, your brain chemistry changes through the release of endorphins, which can also calm anxiety and lift your mood. Um, exercise also reduces feelings of stress. It also gives you clear thinking, so some people find that exercise helps to break up racing thoughts. So as your body tires, so does your mind. It's basically knocking you out so you don't think about anything, yeah, isn't it? it could be. <laughs> Leaving you calmer and better able to think clearly. It gives you a greater sense of calm, so simply taking time out to exercise can give you space to think things over and help your mind feel calmer. It increases self-esteem, so when you start to see your fitness levels increase and your body improve, it can actually give your self-esteem a big boost. And the sense of achievement you get from learning new skills and achieving your goals can also help you feel better about yourself and lift your mood, of course. And finally, um, obviously there's lots of others, but I'm just skittling through them at the moment. It reduces your risk of depression. If you're more active, there's good evidence to suggest that at most ages for both men and women, there is a trend towards lower rates of depression. In fact, one study has found that by increasing your activity levels from doing nothing to exercising at least three times a week, you can reduce your risk of depression by 20%. That's, that's really good, isn't it? That's huge, yeah. Yeah. That okay. Is. So, Ben, let's talk fitness. Yes, Tell us all about it. So, what kind, why, why is it like obviously good for you physically as well? What well, does it do to your body? Just on what you just said, um, it gets you into good habits and good mm. patterns because when you exercise you think oh I'm not going to make that bad choice and eat the food that I shouldn't eat I'm going to yeah. eat something to that's going to benefit what I've just done it's true you're not going to eat something that you're that's going to negate the good work you just did in the gym mm -hmm. so it, it gets you into good patterns and that's really important and all the, all the other benefits that you mentioned yeah. as well okay now, sorry, you were going to no, say something. No, sorry. Okay. So obviously, um, some people say that you know I've not like, really exercised, I've not really committed to a, a fitness regime before, yeah. and they're kind of a bit worried, not sure what to do. What would you recommend? Well, we have to remember as well that not not just going to the gym is a workout. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, you can pick any sport, any activity, even as as easy as walking, and mm -hmm. do that. Um, as long as it makes you happy and, and you want to do it, because the worst yeah. thing is, you know, you see someone and, and, and they don't want to exercise in the gym. They just yeah. don't want to do it. They're not interested in it. It scares them. It makes them feel worse about themselves. 
that's yeah. not what we want. Mm -hmm. We want people to be able to go out and, and do an activity. You know, it could be golf, it could be football, it could be anything. Mm -hmm. And that can be their workout. Yeah. So it doesn't all have to be gym based. Okay. So yeah. you are going to be showing us a few things uh, in just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of also like the age, is there is there like a an age where you should kind of stop, maybe reduce your exercise <laughs> regime because, no. you know, things are getting a bit creaky. Um, I Al although, like, if, as we learned from Hannah earlier, if you eat, like, the, the omega-3, you shouldn't get creaky joints, should you? Yeah, yeah, yeah well, exactly, because <laughs> exactly, you're in those good patterns. But, no, I would say from, you know, the day you're, you're born, you should start, the body wants to move. Mm. And you should never stop moving. As soon as you stop moving, you get stagnation. Okay. Stagnation then produces, you know, disease, and that's not yeah. what we want. Um, one of the, the things I notice with my clients especially is when they um, when they go out and they they leave the gym and they're just so much more happy because they've been moving as well. Yeah. Um, and just movement is so important for that. It and does and make the mind the mind, yeah, it makes you feel great. Um, yeah. and they can be having a really bad day and and you go to the gym or you do the activity I mm -hmm. talked about and you feel amazing. This is true. Now now Ben, obviously sometimes people say I don't have time to exercise. Yeah. It's got such a busy schedule. Break that um, excuse for us. Well, <laughs> again, it, you've got to look at, at what, what you enjoy in your life. And I, I get people to write down maybe four things that they want to do, mm -hmm. that they really enjoy. It. Um, and then try and fit one of those things into your life over the next couple of weeks. Okay. Um, and again, it can be just walking or something like that. But I'm also a big fan of the, the, the non-workout workout. Oh. <laughs> Which sounds Was a bit odd. Yeah. But this, I'll paint you a picture. So you get home and your mm -hmm. house is a complete state and it's, you know, it needs a clean. Mm -hmm. So instead of thinking, oh, you know, I have to clean the house, this is a massive job, stick some music on, really loud, some high energy music and just go for it. Yeah. Really get yeah. stuck <laughs> into it and that will be your workout for the yeah. day. And, and then, you know, you, do it fast you enjoy well. it, yeah, yeah, and you can do it fast, you can really get upbeat about it. Okay, good and that, idea. And that's like a workout, <laughs> but you can also yeah. do that on the way to, you know, on the tube, Take the escalators, but walk up the escalators, mm -hmm. or take the stairs. Or at work, don't take the lift, use the stairs. You can do lots of different things that... The small things that build up. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right, Ben, so let's see you in action now. Show us some exercises that are good that you can do at home. Maybe the person, like you said, doesn't really feel comfortable to go into a gym yet, and what would you recommend for our Well, moment? we all have a body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's one thing that's for sure. So I, I've done this completely just with my body. Okay. Uh, the first one we're going to start with is just a backwards 45 degree lunge. And this mm -hmm. is great for the hips, the glutes, great for your abs, it works pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. So you would just stand in your living room or wherever you, you can find some space uh -huh. and really open up the pelvis, you work your pelvic floor. Now, I've not seen lunges like that before, you're going sort of diagonally rather than They're the, kind of, I call them ninja lunges oh. with my client. <laughs> <laughs> so these Why are they like, so effective, these ones? Because if you see, you see a lot of people and they kind of walk a bit like that, <laughs> yeah. so they've got, what happens is the adductors start to form or, or stabilise your pelvis. Oh. So when you do this, it will stretch them okay. out and then work nice your glutes idea. and strengthen your abs. Okay. So it's all of those oh, things. Very good. So I do them. Okay. Um, the best reps to do with them is kind of do high reps after 20 reps. Then the next one. How many rest. sets of that? Well, you would probably do, I'm doing this as a circuit, so you would do it probably Five. three or four times, oh, okay. as many times as you want to do. Yeah. Um, the next one, so we go down to the mat. This one's quite tough, but you can do it on your knees mm -hmm. if you want. This is called a Spider-Man push-up. Yeah, that looks good. I have done some of these before. So you can do it on your knees and just go okay. out to the side. And that's going to be working obviously your chest, your abs, but it also opens up your hips again okay. and stretches through here. So you end up working your, your lower abs a lot more. Okay. The next one, this is called a side plank with a rotation. So you come up, you're up on your knee. This has already engaged my glutes. Mm -hmm. I'm up like this and then I rotate over and come up. Rotate. That one looks really hard. Up. It is <laughs> hard and it looks. It works your shoulders. You've got the hip thing going on there It works again, your yeah. abs and it's working my hip here yeah. a lot. So my glutes again are getting stronger. Most people I see need to strengthen their glutes. So yeah. you would do that on both sides. Again, aim for higher reps to start with because you want to okay. create endurance. Okay. Endurance is important because yeah. that's, that's what keeps you going. 
The last one is called the quartet of planks. So there's four planks. So you watch me closely. I'm going to be going forward and back to start, and you would do okay. 10. Okay, yeah. Forward and back. So you have to keep quite flat then, not, not with the bottom Not like that, like no, <laughs> not like that. <laughs> okay. And then you go side to side. I've never seen that one. So you're working, wow. you can see my shoulders working quite hard. Yeah. And then you can do through the feet. So then my hips are working That's hard. That's interesting, I've never seen And my seen lower that. back. Yeah. And then go up into the hands. And this one is a bit like a yoga move. Mm -hmm but you're really, really working your abs. Okay. See, so, yeah, I can see it's like... It's hard, A good yeah, workout, because yeah. I can see... Yeah. <laughs> if we miss the Mr. Super Fit here, he's <laughs> getting out of breath, it's good. Yeah, I'm trying to talk and do yeah, that. I don't yeah. normally talk <laughs> when I do hard. that. So yeah, there's your, um, your kind of four exercises. You do them back to back. Okay. Um, again, you, you would be aiming for... Do 15 to 20 reps on each one. Okay. So if you're doing two legs, you would do 10 on each side. Mm -hmm. If you're doing the push-ups, you'd maybe do, that. you'd find them quite hard, but maybe 10 to 15. Okay. Then if you're doing the next one, 10 to 15 on each side. It looks like a really good workout. And then the planks, you do 10 on each. Yeah. Do that three, four times, and you're going yeah, to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Now, how, how long would it take for like doing these kind of exercises to see like a difference in, in your body? Well, like? that would vary, obviously, from person to person, but... Um, I say four weeks, you can see a difference. Really? So yeah. with my clients, every, t every four weeks I change their program okay. because they get, they get used to what they're doing. Mm. And this is where, again, I think a lot of people go wrong is that they do the same thing in the gym all the time, over and yeah. over again. Um, but if you work with a trainer, um, they'll keep changing it or they should keep changing it. Yeah. So it should be every four weeks, change the program, new goals, set new kind of, always working on what can be improved as mm -hmm. well. And that's another thing, actually. I think we've got a couple of minutes to talk about it quickly, about personal training. I wasn't planning on speaking about it today, but since, since you're here, I might as well. Um, that is also another alternative, although sometimes people are a bit worried about the cost, but on the mm -hmm. other side, you know, what, what's important is your, is your health and to get, to get fit and everything. Yeah. So why is, why is personal training so good for a person? I mean, the, they provide you with the motivation. If you, if you, they also give you the focus. So when I have a client come to me, the first thing I... Um, make sure of is their dream. What is their mm. dream? So ha is it big enough? Are they going to stick to my plan mm -hmm. because of that dream? Then the second thing is, you know, what changes are they going to make outside of the gym as well? So oh, you, you don't just focus on what's in the gym, you'll focus mm -hmm. on the nutrition, okay. um, you'll focus on their sleep patterns, you'll focus on everything else that they're going to need to put in, mm. in the able to, to make sure that your workout is having a positive effect. Yeah. Because if you're just working out and then you're going to bed late and you're eating foods that aren't going to benefit your body, okay. it's going to have, I'm not a magician, so yeah. <laughs> it's not going to have any impact. Mm -hmm. So that's really, really important. Um, and also, you're, you're assessing that client every time you see them or that mm -hmm. person, whoever yeah. it is, you know, um, and making sure that the exercises you give them are the best for them, mm -hmm. um, which we're all different. So that's really important as well. How, how do you feel as a trainer when you see sort of the results in people and seeing them happier and it must be well that's yeah that's why you know you get into the job because it's those clients who who go away with really good results that make mm -hmm. you feel good about what you've done but also you can see it in their face as well yeah that they've come in and they're really pleased with themselves that they've um, achieved so much mm -hmm. and we empower them as well so it's them that's doing it we're just helping yeah. We're not, we're not, we're not doing it for them. It's not that. Just that some people just need that little extra push, and yeah, yeah. like I say, sometimes a, a gym might be intimidated to walk in by yourself. Mm -hmm. But if you have your trainer there with you, you don't have to worry about anyone else. Just you and the trainer, and just get on with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the advantage. But you can, you know, try start this stuff at home. Yeah. Do that little workout, um, and then, you know, if you if you enjoy it. You might yeah. want to get yourself a trainer, I don't know. It's, yeah. just <laughs> it's another option, isn't yeah, it's it? It's an option, Definitely. Yeah. yeah. All right, Ben, thank you so, so much. Thank really you, interesting. I'm definitely going to try some of those planks yeah. that I've never done before. I've done the normal one, but not those ones. I'll try those at home. Thank no, you. Thank you. All right, guys, so don't go away because after the break, I'll be sharing my own wisdom on how I keep myself fit and healthy and also be showing you a breakfast smoothie, which was actually inspired by Hannah herself. <laughs> I kind of just adapted some of the things that she showed me and I have that practically every morning. So I'll show you that after the break.
Hi, I'm Chrissy B and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10 p.m. on my channel Sky203. Visit chrissybshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Welcome back everyone to our Fit Body, Fit Mind program today. So we've been discussing how taking care of our physical health can also have a great effect on our mental health as well. So now I'm gonna share with you some of the things that I do to look after myself. So the first thing I do is I look after my spirit. So I am a spiritual person and I do pray and meditate every day and that's how I like to start my day off actually. So before I do anything else, even before I have breakfast or anything else, I like to have that alone time and just to think and to and to prepare for my day. So I don't just rush into, into what I'm doing that day because I'm a very busy person and things can be quite overwhelming. So I always start my day off by looking after my spirit. So I know that a lot of people invest so much in their physical health, in their relationships. And I think sometimes what's missing is that, that spiritual connection because we are spiritual beings as well. We're not just body and relationships. So there's so much more to us as well. Now, the second thing I do is I do eat healthily. Now, th this, this for me has been quite a, a, a gradual thing because I remember before I used to really eat badly. I used to have lots of diet drinks and Coke and all sorts of things and have, you know, chocolate and biscuits and cake, all, all these kind of things, everything that's bad for you. And over the years, as I started to educate myself more on nutrition and things like that, I started to cut down. So I didn't do everything overnight, but where I've reached at the moment is that I don't have um, any processed foods anymore. And um, I've also cut out sugar from my diet. Obviously I can't cut it completely because some things do have, but I only have, for example, I try to only have, for example, a cake when I go out once a week or something like that. So the rest of the week I'm eating healthily, I'm eating fruits, I'm eating nuts. I make my own chocolate with chocolate with using raw chocolate, not even anything with sugar at all. So I, I really try to, to look after myself and I actually I feel a lot better. I feel healthier, I have more energy, my skin's you know, even better, the condition of my skin. So it has had an effect on, on everything. And you are more alert as well. So the kind of work that I do, as you know, doing this show is, is, is a lot of pressure sometimes, people don't realise. But you know, it keeps my mind alert and you know, having, lots, having lots of ideas as well. And another thing that I have been trying, as I mentioned to Hannah Reese, um, before, is I am trying to cut back a bit on the red meat as well. So the third thing that I do is I also exercise regularly. So I recently joined the gym as I was getting a bit bored with my home workouts. I was kind of finding it a bit difficult to motivate myself. I was doing them, but I could see myself kind of slowing down. So then a gym opened just across from where I live, which was great. And I haven't done, um, for example, classes for about 20 years. And I forgot how fun they are. So I've, I've been going, I've been doing um, pure pump, body pump, all those kind of classes where you're using weights and it's to music. And I'm absolutely loving it. And I can see the, the, the difference in my body already, the way I feel, the way I look as well. So I'm, I'm loving it. So as Ben said earlier, sometimes you need to change your exercise routine. Don't stick to the same thing because your body does get used to it and you get bored as well. So try changing things up a bit. If you can join a gym and go and do a class, great. The fourth thing is, I always have a healthy breakfast. So now I'm going to actually show you what I have most mornings. So welcome everybody to Chrissy's Kitchen. So uh, th this actually does show how far I've come in regards of nutrition and stuff because the last time I did a demonstration on the show, I made pineapple cake of sugar and all the stuff that's bad for you so now i'm making something healthy a few a couple of years on so this is what i normally have for breakfast in the morning it's quick and it does actually keep me full up till lunchtime. and there are some dry ingredients that i'm going to show you so what i normally do instead of having to measure these things out each and every morning i make up a big batch uh, mix the ingredients together and then i just um, spoon out what i need every morning it's much quicker and also i do have bananas in the in the ingredients and something else that I do, I buy quite a few of them and I, I buy them when they're quite ripe and freeze them. So then it's, it's a lot quicker for me as well. 
So the first thing that we're going to, let me go for the ingredients first of all. So I have here some flaxseed, which is full of omega-3 and also fiber, which is great for your heart and your skin. I also have in here some, uh, oh sorry, this one, chia. Here we have, um, these, are, these are really, really good for you. So they're among apparently the healthiest food on the planet because they've got lots of fiber and also they've got omega-3, just like the flaxseed. We also have here the maca powder. Now, apparently maca is rich in vitamin B, vitamin C and also E, and it does also have lots of calcium, zinc, iron, magnesium, phosphorus, and also amino acids. So that's really, really a great thing to have. So I also use coconut oil. So obviously coconut oil has loads of benefits. So this is raw organic coconut oil. And coconut oil also improves blood cholesterol levels and also can lower your risk of heart disease, apparently. And I have some oats here. Now oat milk does contain like lots of calcium and potassium, which is also known to reduce blood pressure. I also have some organic peanut butter. So this has protein as well as potassium, which also lowers the risk of high blood pressure, stroke and heart disease. And it does contain fiber as well for your bowel health, which is really good. And healthy fats, magnesium, also to fortify your bones and muscles and vitamin E and antioxidants. So great stuff there. Now this one is optional because spirulina, this one has, it's a type of algae actually, and this one has protein, vitamin B1, B2, B3, iron, and loads of other vitamins and minerals. Now the reason I say it's optional is I, I find, personally find this, the taste quite strong. I only use a little bit in the smoothie. Plus if you're a bit fussy about how things look, uh, it will make your smoothie go green and you might not feel um, like eating something or drinking something that's green, so you can always leave this out. And my final ingredient is, apart from the banana, is the soya milk. So soy milk has 75% more antioxidants than cow's milk. And of course we have the banana over here, which is a good source of potassium. And it can include relief from stroke, blood pressure, heart and kidney disorders, anxiety and stress apparently. And as well, it enhances muscle strength. So great for a gym workout. It helps your metabolism, water balance, and it's got lots of other benefits as well. So those are, are the ingredients. So what I normally do first, I put the milk in first. So no, this, this makes uh, enough for two. So normally I will make one for me and one for my hubby. So I put the milk in first. Otherwise all the ingredients sticks to the bottom if you put the dry ingredients first. Then we have the banana. Okay, in it goes. So this is four, four tablespoons of the flax seed that goes in. I've got a tablespoon of the chia seed. I've got two teaspoons of the maca powder. You're not supposed to use too much of this, by the way. You can look it up on the internet why that is. Then I've got two tablespoons of flax seed, which also goes in. Then I have, I put in my, I put in two tablespoons of coconut oil. It just gives it a really nice, uh, flavour, really tasty. It's a bit messy though. Mm -hmm. And then, let me just wipe my hand a minute. I can't believe my producer made me do this. It's her fault that I'm doing this today. <laughs> and then I put in, you can either put one or two tablespoons of peanut butter. And obviously you can, sorry, let me stop banging there. You can vary the ingredients according to your, your taste. So if you want it runnier, for example, you don't put so much flax seed or oatmeal. Um, obviously, if you like the taste of peanut butter, you'll put more peanut butter in there. Oh, I, I don't know whether to put the spirulina in because it might put you guys off. Let me put a little bit. Normally, I just put a teaspoon. Okay, let me just try and see it goes everywhere as well. Okay, that will do. But like I said, the taste for me is a little bit too strong, so I, I don't tend to put too much. Okay, and if you have one of these blenders, it's great. Pop it on the blender. Blend for about 10 seconds. All done, all nicely mixed together. And then you should actually, don't make this beforehand. As you can see, this one's quite thick. Don't make this beforehand because it does get thicker if you leave it because of the oats and it starts to draw in the moisture, so it gets quite thick. So just make it when you are about to, to actually drink it. So that's my smoothie that I have. I'm not going to try it because it will make my teeth go green and I want to finish the rest of the show.
So guys, I do hope that you've enjoyed this show today. I've certainly had a lot of fun. We've had lots of information from Hannah regarding nutrition. We've had Ben Cooper with the exercise regimes and different things that you can do in the comfort of your own home. And I've also shown you my wonderful breakfast smoothie. But, you know, as I said, it is, it is very important to look after our physical and our physical health and our nutrition. And it does affect our mental well-being. However, as I normally say to my viewers, this isn't enough if you are going through certain issues. So by eating healthily and being physically fit is great. It will lift anyone's mood. But for people that are very depressed or going through issues, maybe they have things that have happened to them in the past, this will not take away the symptoms. It's not going to cure you by, by doing these things. It will make you feel a bit better because as I've mentioned before on the show, I was quite, um, I would say, fanatical about training. I was really into my weight training and was doing really well, even to the point of someone asking me if I wanted to do it professionally. So I got really strong, really muscular and everything, looked really good, but inside, the reason that I did so much training was because I was feeling like rubbish inside. So I tried to kind of, because uh, it, it made me feel a bit better, then I tried to, to do as much training as possible. But obviously I wasn't dealing with the real issue, the real problem. So if, if you are going through something, don't try to hide behind anything, including health and fitness. Don't try to hide behind family or hide behind your job. Make sure you do open up, get the help that you need, speak to someone because it's so great when you are, you know, you've, you've fixed yourself inside, you're, you're in a good place, you're happy inside. And then all these things that we've done today will enhance the way you feel, will, in, will, will be an added benefit to your already happy self, if you see what I mean. So if you need some extra help with that, please, you can get in touch with me via my personal website, which is mylifeafterdepression.com. You can read about my story there, how I got help for the depression that I was going through, for the panic attacks, the OCD, the phobias, and all the other things that I had. You can see how, how I, my journey to, to be where I am today, doing this show for you guys at home. And no case is impossible. Don't think that you're a lost case, that your situation is too difficult, or that you know nothing can be done about it. That's just not true. We've had plenty of people on this show that have proven otherwise. All right, guys, so if you at home also, if you have a topic that you'd like to see us talking about on this program, it is your show too. So please do get in touch via the website, chrissybshow.tv. You can also tweet us at chrissybshow and also you can visit the Facebook page. Don't forget to like it and you can leave a message there and the Facebook address is The Chrissy B Show. Well, that's all we have time for today, I'm afraid. And until next time, bye-bye for now.